The Nintex Gallery provides the Nintex Workflow Cloud Leave Request Template to help you quickly implement a basic form and approval workflow combination for your organization to capture leave requests. In this video lesson, you will learn how to import this template into your Nintex Workflow Cloud environment and then make a customization that might be helpful to your process. Now, I already have my browser open to the Nintex Gallery, which can be accessed by entering gallery.nintex.com. From there, I'll search on Leave Request. Then select Nintex Workflow Cloud Leave Request to go into that template. Notice in here you have an overview with a description and screenshots of the basic form and workflow that will be imported into your environment. So let's click the Import button to get started. The gallery asks us to enter our Nintex Workflow Cloud tenant name as it appears in the Nintex Workflow Cloud URL. I'll enter that in here. Next, I'll validate the tenant name, then click the Import button. After being redirected over to my Nintex Workflow Cloud environment, you can see an Import Workflow box is open with the Workflow Key and Workflow Name fields already populated. I'll click the Import button to load it up. And with that, we have the pre-built workflow in the Nintex Workflow Cloud tenant. Notice the description that appears. You can also see that it uses the form start event. Let's dive in and take a look at the workflow and form that were created from this template. In this phase template, we are given a form start event with the assign a task action, along with two send email actions configured to send a rejected or approval email notification based on the decision that comes out of the task assignment. Remember, you have the ability to customize all the actions in this workflow. If your process requires additional steps, you can always add more actions based on your requirements. In this demonstration, I know I want to make a change to the start event form so that users can't submit the form with an end date that precedes the start date. To do that, I'm going to add a submit rule to the form. So let's go to the start event on the design canvas, click on the design form button, then go to the rules tab at the top of the page. To make this work, I'll add a new submit rule. We can give it a meaningful name here like prevent preceding end date. For the if statement, we can select the end date control, then set the operator to the option is before. We want to compare it to the start date control, so I'll click on the insert plus icon to open the insert window, select form controls, then hover over start date and click insert. Moving down to the then statement, I'll select the end date control and also select show validation error. Finally, we can enter some text that tells the user to make sure the end date doesn't precede start date. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'll click the create rule button and from there we can preview the form to make sure it works. I'll select a couple dates here, making sure that the end date comes before the start date. Then by clicking the submit button, you can see that the form will not submit until the dates meet the criteria for the rule we just created. In this example, we were able to add a nice customization to the base form here as it comes in from the Nintex Gallery template. 